Today, I'm super excited to have Matthew Michaelwich with us, an amazing entrepreneur and author of this incredible book, Life in Half a Second. Thank you for coming in. Pleasure, Judy. Thanks for having me. Now, tell us how you started out in business and your journey this far. I think uh, I wanted to do something when I was young, and we're talking about uh, 16, 17, where I could do something that was enjoyable, something that I really uh, found uh, fulfilling and be paid well for it. And given at that young age that I had no qualifications, the only way to do that was by becoming an entrepreneur. So there's no job that I could get that would afford me that opportunity. So I ended up starting a personal training business when I was 18, which combined- And this is in the US, isn't it? In the US, US, which combined a passion that I had, allowed Mm -hmm. me to do something that I loved. I made a lot more money than I would have otherwise at a job. And that was my entry into entrepreneurship. After that personal training business, I finished college. I had a money management business. After that, I went into technology, raised a lot of venture capital, ran a big tech business, and when that was sold, ended up moving to Australia, and I ended up starting uh, my fourth company here. And the reason, many people ask me why Adelaide, accidental tourist. I uh, visited with my wife Australia for a month, went from Brisbane all the way to Adelaide by car over a one month period, and just fell in love with Adelaide. Didn't know anyone in Australia or Adelaide, but we loved the feeling that we had. Yeah, and when yeah. we went back, we said, boy, remember how we felt then, remember how we experienced this. And the more we talked about it, the more we wanted to relive that feeling and we ended up moving. So mm. I, I love this story because uh, Matthew's come in with this great experience, great entrepreneur and chose Adelaide to start a, a great tech company that became one of the fastest growing in Australia at the time. And, and yep. when you, yeah, and when you sold, you made a lot of money. Um, and he did it in Adelaide where a lot of people said at that point, yeah. that why Adelaide? This is a conservative market, you're yes. gonna struggle, you're coming from America. Tell us about how you overcome that. So I, I think everything is around mindset. When I came here and I told people I was gonna start a tech business and these are the things that we were gonna do, um, they laughed and said, you'll never succeed. And you'll never succeed because it's a conservative market, you're, uh, you know, you've got a funny accent, you don't know anyone here, you don't have any relationships, it's, everything's old boys network and so on. So if you have a mindset that all of those things are true, you would just give up immediately. You'd never try. And I find that a lot of people give up immediately because that's what they believe. Where I didn't have any of preconceived notions along those lines, I felt that I could succeed, not being arrogant, but I really thought that I could succeed wherever I went. Some places Mm -hmm. might be more difficult or easier, but I felt that I could succeed. So I gave it my all. It took seven years from startup to sale of the company, but we succeeded. That's brilliant. Mindset. and your book, you talk a lot about this. Yes. Um, yep. I absolutely love this book. Uh, it's in Audible as well. And I've, yes. I've listened to that. Um, this is incredible. You talk a lot uh, about goals and success yes. in life. Well, first off, um, how did you come up with the name Life in Half a Second? What does that mean to you? Yeah, um, life is quick. I mean, you talk to anyone, they have the impression that it gets faster each year. Um, and the years flow into one another. So we really have a short period of time to make the most of it. And uh, the actual name Life in Half a Second comes from the concept of planet Earth's 4 billion years old. And the amount of time we spend on the planet, 80 years, if you took that proportionally, if the planet was one year old, your existence would be half a second. So it's just yeah. to signify things are happening quickly, make, make the most of it. And uh, the book starts with goal setting because I believe that in any discipline, whether it's sports, whether it's being um, you know, a movie producer or a business person, the more focused you are on a set of objectives or on a specific goal that you're trying to achieve, the better your chances are for success, for achieving it. So mm. the book really opens with this uh, thought on speed, make the most of it, do it now, yeah, yeah. and focus on something specific that you want to achieve. Okay, so what, why is it then that we can't do have New Year's resolutions and, yeah. and we just smash it and, and get our goals? Why do we have to follow this, you know, uh, why does this work so well? Sure, so um, keeping in mind that the book is nothing more than a collection of thousands of studies that have been done on various things, human psychology, um, sports performance, uh, placebo studies in medicine and so on. And it tries to distill into five factors that really influence success. And in your example, New Year resolution, I think the statistics are anywhere, depending on the country, anywhere between 60 to 80% of New Year resolutions are abandoned each year. Mm -hmm. The reason that they're abandoned is people set New Year resolutions that in their heart, they're not really committed to addressing. Stop smoking, leave an abusive relationship, change careers, change jobs, follow a dream, start a business. They all sound great. 
and they become your new year resolution and they forget about it a week later because it's not really in their heart what they're gonna do. And it's one of the factors that I talk about in the book. It's very easy to have a goal and it's very a different thing to have a goal that in your heart you are absolutely committed to achieving. The more passionate you are about something, the more effort you will put into it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So if you pick goals and, and New Year resolutions that in your heart you're really not passionate about, you can really, in your heart, you couldn't care less if they happen or not, the amount of effort that you will put into them is minimal. And that's the results you get. You abandon them or they don't happen. Whereas if you pick a goals that in your heart, gosh, you feel like I can't live without this and this is my calling in life, it's my life's work and I'm passionate, I have to do it, your effort will be incredible. And because your effort is so intense, you have the best chance of success. This mm. is, and many people think it's some magic, you know, some voodoo. Um, I, I have a goal and the universe gives me stuff and so forth. It all just comes down to these basic principles. If you're in love with a concept and you think about it all yeah. the time, you put more effort into it and that you create more results. This is what I love about Matt because, and he does this in the, in the book, it's not that wishy-washy stuff. Yes. This is super yeah. practical. This is from your experience, what's worked, but very well researched and, and the yeah. ideas and stuff. So I think uh, that's hugely beneficial. Well, I come from a scientific family, so it was yeah. hammered to me at a young age, prove it. Prove Might it. sound great, prove it. Yeah. You know, you say that goals uh, augment or increase your success rate, prove it. Where are the studies to support that? So that mentality went into the book. Mm. Every single claim is not my claim. It's supported by studies that have proven this fact to be true. And that's kind of how my mind works. That's brilliant. Now, you are now CEO of Complexica. Yes. Which is a very interesting company. And this is the, the sort of hot stuff we yes. I'd really like to talk about is um, AI. Yes. And you use um, AI software and uh, data science to help businesses grow profitability. Yes. Yep. Their margins. Their yes. You should be a spokesperson engagement. for a company, yeah. I will. I will. You can hire me after this. All um, correct, yes. <laughs> so this is exciting because this is the stuff I love. You know, yeah. we're in uh, social media and we do a lot of marketing and helping business. And it's very data-driven. We like yes. looking at data. And we want to see, we're about connections, especially now in business. And we, we're looking for connections and that engagement. Um, we're seeing now in business and society in general that we do want things faster. Yep. We want smarter options, yeah. and we try and we kind of because we're competing at a global scale in a lot of instances. We also, you know, want uh, things to to kind of work better and yep. and uh, and be low cost. Yes. So how are you delivering that with Complexica for yes, your businesses? So, so we focus in the area of sales and marketing for big companies to really drive, to, to deliver on a promise that will help your company sell more at a higher margin. And you go, especially in a country like Australia, but this is true globally, growth rates are stagnating in industries. It's getting harder and harder for companies to kind of find growth. So the concept of we'll help you sell more, grow, and we'll help you do it at a higher margin becomes a very appealing proposition. How would you do that, to your, to your point? You've got to make a different sales and marketing decisions than you're currently making to get a different outcome. It's the definition of insanity. Do the same, same thing, thing and, ex yeah. and expect a different result. So if you're going to do something different, that means you have to make a decision to do something different, and businesses want to make a data-driven decision. And to your point around how we should price products, what customers we should go after, how should we run promotions, our sales reps, who should they be calling on, with what messages, how should we bundle and price the offer. All of these are very complex questions to answer because of the intensity of data that's available today. So then businesses are resorting to gut and they're not data-driven decisions anymore and the results aren't as good. So introduce artificial intelligence as the solution to the problem of interpreting very large data sets to give a business in real time an answer. Go after these customers with this message, with this product mix at this price, and you'll get a better result, more sales at a higher margin than if you did what you're currently doing. And that is, so we're not about technology for the sake of technology, we're about technology it's to It's got to be drive, usability. We're not yeah, even usability, business outcomes. Yes. Business outcomes. Yeah. I, I was raised, you know, in, a, in an environment where business problems and outcomes came first, and then the technology to deliver the outcome came second. Yep. That kind of mentality. Whereas a lot of tech companies I know have the opposite mentality. Technology is awesome. It's amazing. It You're does. not doing AI because it's sexy? Yeah, it, it just happens <laughs> to be sexy, but it is the best solution to the current data problem that exists. Right. So it's the fact that it's sexy is helpful, 
but it's not the reason that we're, yeah. we're doing AI. It's to deliver a business outcome. So give me an example. So if you've got a big corporate that yep. has multiple branches, you can use this software and Larry yep. to understand individual markets and play to those markets. Correct, correct. So say you've got 100,000 customers or 10 million customers. Say you're offering a thousand individual products or 10,000 or 100,000 individual SKUs. Say you've got hundreds of salespeople, say you've got telesales, and say you're constantly interacting with that marketplace. What products should be offered when, to what customer, at what time, in what combination, at what price to maximize your profitability and your revenue? Super complex question to answer. And a salesperson, imagine being that kind of salesperson, carrying a product catalog of 100,000 products your business sell. How would you know? I mean, engaging with the customer, what specific set of products I should offer you, how they should be priced, what kind of fit it would be to your business. And then imagine if you had this AI software robot, Larry, that did all of that work for you and just said, look, go and see Jody, Matt. And when you go and see her, tell her about these products that we offer and price it in this way because that's going to be the best chance you've got of making a deal. All the work's done. Like magical. It is. But it is someone in our company. Done. Yeah, someone in our company um, coined the phrase, Auto magically, you know. Auto magically, I, like, <laughs> yeah. I like it. Okay, so uh, people like me and other people yeah. out there that see the eruption of that AI. That see the yep. eruption. Yep. Um, it was like yesterday. It felt like this was sci-fi movie yep. kind of stuff. Yes. This was not on the radar. This is 2050. How much is this impacting, and what's it going to do for our immediate future and now in business? Yeah. Well, um, AI has been around us for a long, long time. It's just people um, didn't understand what AI is other than uh, the Terminator or Steven Spielberg movie and so on. But I'm um, going back decades, robotics used uh, AI on production lines in terms of, you know, to, for a robotic arm to pick up a book and give it to you, there's a significant amount of algorithmic development that would have to happen to control that. Vision systems for security purposes or food quality, uh, natural language processing, Siri on an iPhone and so on. Even the swipes of credit cards. How long have you been um, paying by a credit card? Decades? Yeah, for, That's all for been a, AI. Mm. That's all been neural networks, which is now deep learning, et cetera, building So you think we're just not aware that- th The yeah, awareness is now coming, yeah, yeah. right? And so what's happening recently is um, computing power has fallen off a cliff. It's very cheap. Um, computers have been virtualized through the cloud. Um, there's been more dollars in science put towards algorithmic development and all of that has converged into high profile topics like driverless cars for example and others that are building this awareness but AI has been around us and it will continue to uh, enter our lives throughout what I would call backdoor ways you wouldn't yeah. even know that you're on your phone is some AI or in your car there's AI to control sensors and, and uh, cruise control and so on. And what's going to happen over the next decade is it becomes more comprehensive and it provides more control and more assistance. It'd be interesting because we'll have a lot more efficiency then too yeah. with, with everything we do in business and life. Well, hopefully there'll come a point where we can just sit at home and watch TV. And yeah, we'll, we'll send our that, robots yeah, yeah, that's, out to That's do right, our, our avatar goes and does the work. Thank you very much. Now I have something special for you because Dumbbell a little sound. gift. No. Yeah, because uh, I know that you like working out and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wow, wow, look, that's, thank you. Come with me if I, you want to lift.